Hey, CSEN fans, man, are we stoked to bring you a new season. So let's get right to our winter. Sixteen teams locked in comedic battle in the toughest competition happening in any sport, anytime this March. The Six Things Tournament. This Saturday, the Final Four is here. Our red and blue division champions will be decided, and they'll go head to head in the finale next week. But who will it be? In the blue division, this will be an all-out battle. The Midwest Midbests are looking better than ever with their smooth takedown of Cat Tax last week. And their opponents and tournament Cinderella's, the Angelica Houstons, survived a tie with the Shea Stakes and won the audience vote by three total votes. It is 50-50 with a score, oh my God, with a score of 1,329 points to 1,326 points. Moving on next week is going to be the Angelica Houston. Yes. Oh, no. Can Bradley Makov and his team keep their dominance going? Or will Connor Wood's squad squeak out another amazing victory? In the Red Division, we have another absolutely amazing matchup. Last week, the Busta Mimes were behind their whole match until anchor Ryan Ford I know him, stole the final clue of Laffy Taffy joke, propelling them into the final showdown. Uh, so I'm making a fire, I'm at along John Silvers, and the wood itself is a Laffy Taffy joke? Yes! Yes! That's exactly what He'll be is. going up against 30 plus, who were shocked by the hot lava boys resulting in a tie match. The audience ultimately gave the go-ahead to 30 plus. Moving on is 30 plus. <laughs> so the showdown is set. Is Captain David Dritzis shook by the tie last week? And the fact that he's going up against his old Chicago teammates? Will Captain Todd Kenworthy finally lay down that 900 mile per hour gibberish we've all been waiting for? This match could go either way. Who will move on? Who will take it all? Some put a chocoracacha amazing! Or jabaragambombon extravaganza! Some bargain puchaba cheese! Did you know that March is Women's History Month? Well, did you? If you didn't, now you do. And you can celebrate with us right here at Comedy Sports Chicago. We're going to feature special events throughout the month, but specifically our Friday 7.30 p.m. matches are going to feature all female players all month long. The entire event is going to culminate in a very special weekend, April 7th through 11th. Comedy Sports Chicago is so excited to host Comedy Sports Worldwide Women's Weekend. That's right, we're going to welcome women from Comedy Sports cities around the world for a weekend of all-female matches. So be sure to mark your calendar for April 7th through 11th and join us throughout the month of March for special events and some fun surprises to celebrate Women's History Month. We hope to see you right here at CSCN Chicago. Okay, on Jean. Just trying to keep my head on straight. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. I told that lady at the coffee shop to just give me the whole dang coffee pot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. How are you, on Jean? Struggling, girl. I don't feel confident using this fancy loom. Zoom, whatever it is, uh, working remotely, honey, for Aunt Jean just feels so different than working in that office. Have you thought about taking an improv class? Child, now why would you think I would do that? I need help at work. I'm funny enough as it is. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
Of course, you are certainly funny, Aunt Jean. But improv classes can help develop other skills. Improv can help folks build confidence or just be better public speakers. Girl, I'm a working woman. I do not have time for a full eight-week class. You don't have to. The new Training Center Blueprint allows you to take one, two, three, or even all eight classes. If you only have time to take one two-hour class, then you can sign up for that one. You can also bundle your classes and save money. Well, I do need more help. Plus, I have some hilarious jokes to share. Have you heard that classes start February 22nd and that folks should sign up ASAP if they want to reserve their spot? See, your mama didn't raise you right. Interrupting your elders. What? What did you say, Aunt Jean? Nothing, child. Where do I sign up? Well, Aunt Jean, just head to CSCChicago.com. If you're still unsure, you can always schedule a time to chat with someone from the training center to help you figure out the best path. Okay, honey, I gotta find my glasses that I lost again. I'll see you in class, okay? See you in class, Aunt Jean. Yeah! Hello, Gladys. Gladys Pumpernickel. It's me, Nana Hannah. You want my Nana? Hmm? Hannah, you're not my Nana. You're just... Hannah. Oh, you're such a stinker, Gladys Pumpernickel. My fans on the Twitch call me Nana Hannah. It's my stage nom. Oh, you have fans? On the Twitch. You have Twitch? I bet you need me to tell you what a Twitch is. Well, here's how it all starts. Uh, no. I'm pumping nickel up the jams 42. I stream NBA 2K. Oh, Gladys, how wonderful for you and your family. What do you stream on Twitch? Comedy sports. Hm. Is that an MMORPG? Uh... Or is it more of a battle royale situation? That is Pumpernickel. I have no idea what you're saying right now. And I have the right mind to go get an old priest and a new priest and march right over there to bring you some of my world famous salmon bread, of course. <laughs> oh, I do love your salmon bread. Anyway, comedy sports is improv comedy. And my adorable grandson and online winner, Jason, sometimes plays and tries to make funny voices and characters. It's so much fun. There's barns burning and people speaking in tongues. It's a real gas. Sounds like a real hoot. It's a humdinger of a good time. Sounds like a real rap. Shenanigans. Is it quite the bee's knees? A real hullabaloo. Oh, the cat's pajamas. It's a fiasco. Well, that's a real bowl of spicy salsa. Jazz. Yes, 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 yes. That's enough, Gladys Pumpernickel. Oh, well, I'll connect my Prime account right away so I can get them some subscription money. Gladys, are you a robot? No, I just mean when you connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, the account you subscribe to gets some funds, you know, to help them operate. Oh, and I have to pay for that, yes? Hannah Bananasworth, do you know nothing? No. Oh. And I have never heard my last name until now. If you have an Amazon Prime account, then you can connect to Twitch for free. It's like a little tiny donation to the theater. Oh, that's so nice. How do I do it? Oh, I'll explain it for the blue hairs in the room. You go to gaming.amazon.com. Now, if you haven't logged into your Prime account, do that now. Mm hmm. I know you're already confused, Nana.
it is by Erica Chapel, and it is a hack uh, of the game mechanics of the Lasers and Feelings by John Harper. So if you saw our first one shot of the series, uh, that was actually Lasers and Feelings. Uh, so the mechanics are going to be a little familiar. And if you're like, piss kids and rat bags, here's the deal, guys. Apparently, Griffin McElroy and his wife, Rachel McElroy, are big fans of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. And they apparently have decided that all folks on here uh, basically fall into one of two categories. They're either a piss kid, super whiny, really obnoxious, got a trust fund, just terrible, or they're a rat bag, super douchey, very brosophy, absolutely horrible. And they're in one of two categories. Um, and so our contestants for uh, the heart of The Bachelorette of this evening are, are on that spectrum. Now, because I don't want to say the word piss kid over and over and over again on this stream because I think it might get us tagged. Um, I, and so folks find themselves on a spectrum where they are either abrosive uh, and all the things that come along with that or they're a whiner. Um, and so uh, they have picked a number between two and five. So if they're closer to being abrosive, going to be closer to a two and if they're more of a whiner they're going to be uh at a five so as they try to pull things off i'm going to have them roll for it they're going to roll a six a couple of six-sided dice potentially all the way up uh, and to be successful they have to roll if they're trying to do something that a whiner would be good at they have to a number so right pays off to be to have that high number if you're trying to do something that's whiny but if they're abrosive they want to roll over that number and that's what determines success so they're gonna roll these and they're gonna let me know how successful they are. Now, if at least one die, right, is, is in that magic number metric, they will be successful, but things will kind of go a little sideways. If two are successful, it goes perfectly. How wonderful. They probably do something that impresses the bachelorette. If they roll three, it is epic. Now, I don't mean necessarily epic in a good way. I mean epic in a horrible reality television show sort of way. So I'm excited to see how that shakes out. But there's just one other little teensy tiny wrinkle. Uh, and that is if they roll their number exactly along with one success, they will be a human being, just a real, just a real decent, decent person, human being. They'll dig down into the depths of, of, of who they are and say something that like a normal person would say to somebody else. And it's going to be great. Um, you will see, I think, if you are familiar with these shows, uh, all the things that you're familiar with, rose ceremonies, first impressions. I'm going to be coming to you guys to give out some roses, so keep an eye on that chat. But most importantly, if you hear, I encourage you to get a libation. If you hear certain important phrases from these shows, such as, I'm not here to make friends. Drink. If someone says, can I steal you for a minute? Drink. If someone else says, I think I'm falling in love. Drink. So I'll raise my glass in the background, but I would encourage you as you see these tropes to, to lean on in because we'll be having a grand old time. But now... We'll come into the again the kickoff the first episode of our show of legendary loves because this is not a copyright infringement of the bachelor or the bachelorette so the bachelorette this year on legendary loves is has been a fan favorite she was on the previous season uh with percy where she ultimately won his heart but dessa gordon is sort of the kind of girl that you know, everyone just sort of roots for. Uh, she previously worked at an all women sort of tech and advertising form, uh, firm uh, before having her heart broken uh, by her first boyfriend, Cy, who convinced her to sort of leave the firm only to break her heart. And it was in that heartbreak with the hope that she could potentially find love that she went on Legendary Loves and everything seemed great. Everyone loved her. She was fantastic. And, and at the end of the day, Percy said that she was the one whose eyes that he wanted to look into for an eternity. But shortly after the news came out, he had a temper and Dessa frankly just knew that at the end of the day, this was not the love for her. She was left heartbroken. And so the producers thought maybe it's her chance finally to do the choosing to do the picking, to find the love that she deserves. Uh, and so we're now going to cut to the beginning of the show where we'll be able to meet each of our contestants. They'll be able to do a little bit of a confessional and then we'll see them get out of the limo and introduce themselves to the bachelorette. So our first contestant, come into the confessional booth and introduce yourself. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Oswald Youngman. Uh, I'm 80, I'm sorry, I'm 28 years old and I'm thrilled to be here on this season of Legendary Loves. 
Uh, I used to be a theater projectionist, but you know, all these new up and coming theater projectionists rely on digital projections. And so now I've started self publishing my own newsletter projection about what's wrong with the current generation. And I'm just excited to finally make a connection in real life. Oh, right. also, I'm a number five whiner. All right. We'll now cut to uh, the scene where uh, on the, the steps of the, the legendary love mansion, uh, we'll see uh, Oswald will have his chance to make that first impression. Uh, Dessa is standing there on the steps uh, looking absolutely gorgeous. Uh, she's uh, got sort of a delightful caramel colored skin. Her hair is wrapped up in her sort of signature hair wraps, uh, perfectly complementing her beautiful uh, bright red gown, standing there just looking nervously when Oswald pulls up. Oswald, tell us what your entrance looks like. So as the limousine pulls up in front of the house, the back door opens and about 45 seconds later, Oswald emerges. And then Oswald climbs back into the limousine and comes back out wearing his hat and then closes the door, but it doesn't quite latch. So you can hear the bing, 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 bing coming from the driver's seat. And Oswald uh, makes his way up the path to meet Dessa. Uh, oh, I, I'm sorry. Are you you doing all right? Um, hi, it, it seems like you're having a little trouble with those steps. No, no, I'll make it. And a few minutes later, uh, Cut for time. Uh, Oswald makes it uh, up to uh, up to Dessa and holds out his hand. Uh, Dessa is standing there while uh, the the host uh, his his Harrison says, "I'm not sure that he is of the right age to be on the show." Young man, how old are you? I am 28 years old. I can prove it because earlier when I ordered a tea, I got a bubble tea instead. Oh, uh, I, I mean, I love tapioca. I, that's so exciting that we have that in common. Tapioca? That's my favorite food. I should have been ordering this all along. Oh, well, uh, you learn something new every day. Uh, so, um, Oswald, uh, is, tell me about yourself. Is there any anything that you want to know now that you're in your, you know, our, our moment together? Yes. What's your favorite movie of the last year to 80 years? Oh, um... Well, I, I guess, you know, I, I've, I don't know. I kind of go for the classics. I always love Clash of the Titans. Oh. The remake, though. The remake. Oh. Where's the restroom? <laughs> and with that, I'm guessing that Oswald shuffles off. And so we'll go into the confessional for our next suitor. Hi. Um... My name is Trinity. I'm originally from Glencoe, Illinois, and I am the founder and CEO of Cowbrows Inc. We have two main products. They are a yogurt that gradually dyes your eyebrows, as well as a di an app that helps cows find friends. Because I care about making the cows happy because they make our yogurt happy. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of being happy, um, I'm here to um, make connections, whether it be a networking opportunity and mainly to find love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, all right. And so we'll cut now straight to Krenity's entrance. Uh, Krenity, tell us, what does it look like as you approach the mansion? Okay, so you know how in Taylor Swift's musical Blank Space, there's a shot of her standing on top of a horse with her arms like, yes, here I am, I'm Taylor Swift. Um, I'm doing something similar, except I am standing on top of two cows, and they are just trotting at a, at a normal pace, uh, but I, I still have my arms out like, look at me, I'm basically Taylor Swift. Um, and uh, so I, I arrive uh, on those cows, and... Um, I, I try and make a graceful uh, dismount, which just involves uh, just sort of s squeezing in between the two of them. But I totally play it off. 
Uh, actually, Krenity, especially because you, you need a decent amount of core strength uh, to, to be able to pull off standing on two co- uh, cows, go ahead and roll uh, for us. Mm. You're going to roll for Brosif, right? So you're okay. going to need to roll uh, over your number and go ahead and roll two die. Okay. Okay. I got a two for my first one. Okay. And I got a five for my second one. So I'm assuming that's one success then, Krenity? I think so, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, great. So you, you do indeed, you start to wobble a little bit and you see a couple of the producers, like one of them is going to run out after you and the other just grabs him by the arm and goes, no, no, this is what we want. Uh, but you, you save it. And again, you, you, squeeze, you squeeze down, everything's safe. Uh, as you're walking up, uh, Dessa has actually headed straight for the cows going, oh, they're so cute. So she meets you, uh, halfway. What, what do you say as you meet her? Oh my gosh. I say, um, I hope you like, uh, my cow friends. Um, and if you do, then the other competitors better move over. (laughs) Oh gosh. It's funny because cows say moo and oh, that's hilarious. (laughs) You look beautiful, by the way. Thanks so much for coming. Oh my god, thank you. Right back at you. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I just I always get so nervous. Oh um, my god, no, I love red on you. It looks so good. Oh, oh, um, well, well thank you. Um yeah. are are do the cows get to stay or, or do you have to return them? Oh no, they can totally stay. They're they're two of the founding members of my app, uh, Cow Brows. Oh, oh the the apps for for cows. Yeah, yeah, they met they are best friends that met on Cow Brows. That's, that's amazing. Um, uh, great. Uh, all right. So uh, it was wonderful to meet you. And um, I hope to see you and the cows later. Bye. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Bye. All right. Now we'll take our third, our third contestant will now come on up into the confessional. <laughs> hey, how are you everybody? My name is Brett, um, Rhett. Rhett, <laughs> Rhett Michaels, okay, uh, Rhett Schmeichels, uh, yeah, I am, uh, just a freelance musician, uh, I play the guitar, um, just kind of a freelance, uh, traveling across, playing at, uh, uh, your local county fairs, just, uh, playing some of my, uh, sick tunes, uh, you know, just, uh, I'm here to find, um, someone to be my love, and someone to be my rock. I uh, just, I really need someone to be my rock of love. Well, uh, Rhett, you've certainly come to the right place. It seems like you are far more comfortable on camera almost than than some of our other contestants. I I wonder why that is. (laughs) That's so funny you say that. (laughs) Um, My uh, cousin owns like a, a camera studio um, on the square down in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Not a. I've never been on camera, or like a dating show, or on like MTV or any. I've never done that. I no, totally, <laughs> totally new to this. Well, with that natural charisma that somehow just uh, you know obviously makes you set and ready to go no matter what. Uh, we now uh, come to your entrance. What does your entrance look like? All right. Well, Rhett's pretty late. All right. Uh, Rhett's about like two hours behind sketch. <laughs> yeah, it's actually just uh, uh, his his Carson standing out there uh, awkwardly holding a plaque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but eventually you hear the extremely loud putter of a Harley just rolling through the hills and mountains, and uh, and uh, then I finally roll up on my motorcycle, uh, ready to ready to say hey, you know, to to the babe of the house, you know. Uh, you pull up and you see a, a balding man in a suit uh, who looks like he has a stick shoved up his ass, just sort of standing there, going, "Are you the final suitor? You're very late." Oh well, uh, I like to think of myself as a. Uh, rock star if you will so i never show up on time i need you to know that right now <laughs> well that's wonderful to see that you have such a respectful attitude when it comes to schedules appreciate so 
Uh, go ahead and uh, come on in. Uh, Rhett, actually, I want you to roll for Brosif to see just how pissed off the camera crew is. Um, so uh, as a rock star, uh, we're going to have you roll three dice just because you're obviously your musician status. You're used to having a lot of confidence. Uh, and, and then this obviously was a, a pretty good PR stunt. Um, but we'll see how sort of well it, it well goes with the camera crew. So go ahead and roll three <laughs> six. All right, so I got a one, a one, and a two. <laughs> What's your number? Just curious there, uh, Rhett. Oh, my number is a three. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, it was actually raining. Uh, and so both uh, Chris and the rest of the camera crew, or Hiss and the rest of the camera crew, uh, had to stand outside the entire time. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, you have thoroughly pissed them off. Uh, so you can sort of be guaranteed bad lighting for the rest of the show, but we'll, we'll, we'll see where this goes. Uh, oh. So you, you make your late entrance, uh, but in the meantime, we'll flash back in time uh, to our next contestant in the confessional. Hello, uh, my name Cardi B. Um, I am number five whiner. Well, oh, um, I work at uh, DHL. I am shipping and logistics specialist. Um, well, I am how old? Cardi B is a perfect cube, 27 years old. Uh, and Cardi B is the full package, so Cardi B is looking for someone to spend the rest of the delivery with. I mean, this is the kind of, you know, deep, you know, sensitive love story that we're all looking for. Uh, so Cardi, we'll, uh, we'll go straight to the mansion. Uh, tell us what does it looks like when you, when you get delivered, when you land on uh, the, uh, the bachelorette's doorstep. Promptly on time, Cardi B arrives in large yellow van with red striping that says DHL on the side. And then we hear <laughs> of the horn. But is it Cardi B in the driver's seat? No. Cardi B comes out of the back of truck. Cardi B <laughs> opens up with packages in hands and says, hello, I have arrived on time. Oh, oh, oh that's... That's wonderful, and what a, um, well, that's a, certainly a non-traditional way of arriving, um, uh, but, oh, is that vehicle fuel efficient? I really care about the environment, too. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, is that, hold, hold on, is that, oh, yeah. this is my, oh, this is the Amazon package that I ordered a few years ago. Um, Cardi how did B you find found this? It. Cardi oh. B, logistics specialist, Cardi B can find lost packages and lost love. Uh, there's there's a moment where you all just stare into one another's eyes. Uh, there's a, a tension arises and she goes, I've, I certainly feel like I've lost a lot of myself this past year. So I'd like to go on that journey to that ultimate arrival destination together, Cardi. There's no shipping fee when you're with me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and on that on that note, uh, again, you, you get such a, a great cut, and we go to our final suitor in the confessional. Hi, I'm Kenneth Allen of the Kenneth Allen Law Group. You may have uh, <laughs> seen me recently. I run my commercials on local morning news shows, uh, as well as TV judge shows, and recently, thanks to settling the fourth heightest out-of-court settlement for a shoulder injury in <laughs> Cook County on a, that occurred on a Thursday with a ladder involved. I was able to get my retainer, and we now have commercials on the Wendy Williams show. Ooh. That's just for the Wendy heads out there. <laughs> Anyways, I'm really excited to be here. I'm 64 years old, and uh, I can't tell you how I'm excited to meet uh, I mean, Kenneth, again, it seems like you're a real pro when it comes to being comfortable on the stage. So tell us what it looks like as, as you make your arrival to, to the mansion. Well, I wanted to go so. So what I did was I had a scale of justice wheeled in, a very large size scale of justice. I, of course, am on one side of it. 
then a helicopter flies in and drops a cube of money onto the one side and then i flip off and land mm -hmm. on the ground on the other side at the very that that very moment uh a very talented actress that i hired to perform to portray justia uh rips her blindfold off and hands me my signature fedora uh, this obviously is, is beautifully executed, um, but we need to know, uh, again, how, if you were able to land that flip. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and roll, roll for Brosif. Um, so you're going to want to roll, try to get successes over your number. Uh, go ahead and, and roll three dice, because if you pull this off, this is going to be uh, a rating success. Three dice, huh? All yeah, right. three dice. Shouldn't be too hard. All right. So I've got a one, a three, and a four. Uh, what's your number? Two. Two. Uh, so that is one success. Uh, you land and you stick the landing. There's a little bit of a wobble. But you suck it up. That uh, that uh, you know all of those uh, joint supplements you've been taking uh, that you got in a settlement a few years ago have finally come in handy, and you manage to to pull it off, uh, and you're settled. Uh, and then uh, Dessa comes forward and goes, "Oh, wow, that is um, that's some really high production value." Um, that's that's um, incredible. I um, I'm guessing you're a lawyer. Uh, indeed, indeed. Uh, I actually have my own law firm. Oh wow! Um, I mean, uh, what kind of uh, you know what kind of law do you settle? I you know I've been donating to the you know uh, uh, Human Rights Coalition for years. I, I'm a big fan of the ACLU. Um, it, it, tell me, what sort well, of cases do you do? Interesting that you ask, because I watched your last season and I heard you had a broken heart. That's why I'm here to repair it. Or at least do the pants off of whoever broke it for you. Uh, and I she takes a injury. She takes a moment and goes, "You know, I I lost a lot of time and I cried a lot of tears over that. So um, I am I may take you up. I'm sorry. I'm just getting really emotional." Uh, and she and she walks off. Uh, and so uh, now, having met everyone, you all are are, are pushed into uh, into the mansion for the cocktail hour. Uh, but uh, dear friends in the audience over in Twitch, uh, this is your chance to see who gets the first impression rose. Uh, who do you think really uh, pulled pulled it off? Um, Kennedy coming out coming out hot already. Um, so. As folks are voting on this, um, uh, suitors, you all are uh, in a, a rush, uh, you know, very lush, well-appointed sort of fireplace room. There's an open bar. Cameras are everywhere, but you all are just sort of standing around. Um, what's happening? Who's talking to who? Uh, Oswald is going around the room, and anything that looks remotely like a, like a crystal bowl or something, he's walking up to it, looking at it, and then very loudly asking the room in general, Are these all sorts? And then moving on to the next bowl. <laughs> of course, uh, Kenneth Allen is uh, what, sidling up to Wretch Michaels um, because he swears he's seen him before. But in addition to that, I don't have any drinks until after I've made two new connections. Um, I make a beeline for Kenneth Allen um, because I heard all about that settlement money that he got. And um, while my company is wildly successful, I would never turn down a new potential investor. So just want to see what he, how he's doing. Uh, Cardi B is gently tapping all vases to see how fragile they are. Uh, Cardi, uh, some of these vases are not, uh, settled down, uh, and you're, you know, you might not know you're in strength. Uh, please roll for Brosif to see oh. if you can manage to, to not break any. Uh, you're a logistics specialist, and if this breaks, uh, it's gonna be good TV, so I'm gonna have you roll three dice, but we'll see if you're oh. able to pull this off. Cardi B rolls real dice is tough. One, four... Four. Okay. So sadly, Cardly, uh, Cardi, uh, if you're yeah. rolling for Brosif, I believe your number is five, correct? You that needed to correct. roll over your number. So oh, no. what happens is you, you go to see how fragile one is, huh? it wobbles and psh, shatters, sending uh, chips everywhere. All of a sudden, everyone's head flip around and turn and they're all staring at you, Cardi. What do you do? Cardi slowly backs perfectly into a corner 
and slowly, perfectly settles into the floor, making sure all three of Cardi's perfectly orthogonal sides touch the wall and gets as small as Cardi can. Uh, over, over your shoulder, you see two producers going, oh no, we've already got one in the midst of a breakdown. This is going to be amazing. Um, and it, in that moment, as the, the tension has sort of settled, um, uh, Hiss Kerrison comes forward with uh, a rose on a silver platter and walks into the group. He says, uh, you will all be pleased to know Dasa will be joining you soon, uh, but the first impression rose of the evening goes to Miss Kennedy. Oh my god, no way! <laughs> oh my god, it's such an honor. It's so unexpected. Oh my god, thank you. And during, uh, that, oh, and during that entire uh, acceptance speech, just in the background, you can just hear of a cough drop being unwrapped. <laughs> uh, Hiss looks over at the, the rest of you and says, perhaps you should take a note from Miss Kennedy and truly put your focus on winning over the suitor rather than looking for fame. And he casts a look directly at you, wretch Michaels. What would you like to do? Um, I, I think Red, like, really wants to, like, go up and, uh, go up and, uh, see if I can, uh, steal, steal a last way for, for, for a Diet Corona. If you want to have a Diet Corona with old Red out in the courtyard, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he quickly peels off, but you see someone from craft services is, is sort of walking over and is like, I, I thought you were diabetic. I, I think that that's not good for you, sort of be having so much sugar. Yeah, but I wrote diet on here, so, like, it counts. Great. That'll, that'll work out very well for you, I'm sure, in the end. Um, yeah. uh, in this moment, um, uh, Dessa Gordon turns the corner. She's, she's back in the room. Uh, all of your heads spin. This is the cocktail party. This is your chance to get her attention, uh, make an impression before the first row ceremony of the night. What are you all doing? I have uh, cracked open a second uh, Rona here and just said, I've uh, iced you, babe. <laughs> she she looks at you and goes, oh, I... Um, uh, I actually, I don't, I, I don't, I don't drink beer. Um, I actually, I, you know, I, I prefer, I prefer wine. Um, but, but thank you, um, for that. It's okay, more for me. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, Rhett, that hurt, right? You offered, you offered a lady a drink and she said no. Has this ever happened to you before? No, like, not to brag, but like, I've dated a lot of women and uh, no one says no to the rat. You know uh, what I'm saying? So, Rhett, I'm going to have you roll to see, roll for Brosif to see if your ego can manage to withstand this or if you're going to have the yips for the rest of the evening. Oh. Uh, so go ahead and roll 2d6, and you need to roll over your number. All right. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I got two threes and a two. You rolled right now immediately? I rolled right now. Right now, there we go. Okay, two threes and a two, uh, and your number is? Three. Oh, Rhett, this is your chance to act like a real human being. What are you gonna do? Um, I'm just going to um, politely ask Dessa what, what type of flower she likes and if she likes bubble baths and um, maybe like a nice back massage. Oh, uh, she she takes that moment and, and sees you go from sort of like chief chief douche mentality to kind of like you know saving things up and is like um uh, well I um I, I'm a big fan of, honestly of just any wildflowers and um uh, you know I, I like relaxing walks really um I you know I, I grew up near Greece um, near the ocean so you know anytime I buy a body of water I you know I, I just kind of like walking um, sorry I feel like I, I misjudged you um, anyway uh, it's been so great to meet you. Uh, other contestants, other suitors. Dessa is having a moment with Rhett. What do you want to do right now? Um, can I just can I just steal Dessa for a second? You can. Uh, sure, sure, it's fine, it's cool. Uh. Um, I just wanted to um share one of my drinkable yogurts, Cowbrows. Um, 
it's something I really care about. Um, it's, it's my passion and it's something that I really want to share with someone that I truly have a connection with. Ooh, Crenity, you're walking, you're walking a fine, fine line uh, between shameless self-promotion uh, while playing it off that this is actually a passion project. Yeah. You're going to need to roll for Weiner. Uh, so Ooh. you will need to roll uh, under your number and roll 2d6, two, two and we'll see if you're successful in this. Okay, so my number is a 4. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got a 3. Okay. And I've got a 2. Oh, a total success. Um, uh, you know, the folks at home might not be convinced, but in this moment, um, Dessa is just excited. She sees that you're really passionate about this. She met those cows earlier. And so she takes your, what is your drinkable yogurt in? Walk me through that. Oh, oh, thank you so much for asking. Um, I, I wanted it to stand out on grocery shelves. Um, unfortunately, because I went with an eyebrow shape for it, um, it does not, in fact, stand up on grocery shelves. Mm -hmm. um, so stocking it has been a bit of an issue. But um, yeah, it is. Uh, it's an eyebrow shaped glass container, um, you know, for the environment and turtles. And um, it's just got an opening at the end here uh, that you that you drink out of. Uh, great. Uh, you all yeah. throw back a shot of drinkable yogurt. It tastes... Yeah like drinkable yogurt sort of like a gogurt that got left out in the sun for too long uh yeah or kefir really bad kefir uh which is what that is uh great you have dessa's attention right now Crenity. what else would you like to do um dessa um i just i just really want to know like who who are some people you really admire and like how much money do they make Oh, um, well, I mean, honestly, if I had to think about it, um, probably my two other sisters, um, you know, I just love them. I feel like they're really just sort of like focused on, on what they need to be doing. Um, I mean, the one, she's an artist. Um, so she, you know, uh, she does interpretations mostly of landscapes. Um, the other, she's a, a public advocate. So, um, not much money in the family, but you know, we, we say, you know, do what you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Oh, that is, that is so sort of the same as what I think, sort of. <laughs> well, uh, that's, I mean, really, I've just, you know, I, honestly, I've been looking for someone to share my, my values. You know, I don't, um... Um, Cardi B knocks over champagne flute to get attention of Dessa. Uh, that's, uh, very much, uh, a, a whiner move. Uh, so go ahead and roll three dice for whiner and we'll see how successful, uh, that champagne, uh, flute knockover is. Ugh. Two, two, three. Okay, and uh, with a five as your number, this is a wild success. Uh, you intentionally broke something to get the attention of someone on television uh, and or, you know, made it look like you were, uh, you know, vulnerable when you weren't. Uh, that's a bachelorette move. Everybody take a drink. Uh, there's a uh, crashing noise. Uh, everyone whips around, including Dessa. Uh, Cardi, I imagine you're standing there sort of uh, looking at the glass. Uh <laughs> And Dessa immediately runs over and goes, oh, gosh, no, oh, be careful. Oh, oh, oh don't step in glass here. Uh, and she puts a throw pillow down over it and, and very gingerly sort of scooches you out of the corner. Uh, she has her hand on, on one, one side of your flaps. Um, what do you want to do, Cardi? Cardi would like to take opposite flap and put it on her hand. Oh, oh. Uh, your your cardboard just just lays very sweetly over her hand, and again there's a moment where your your eyes lock and, and time sort of stops, and, and she's like, oh uh, um oh I'm I'm sorry I didn't I, I didn't I should have asked um we just met I just um uh, I don't know no, I, I, no, I just feel like no I I'm so sorry I am so strong but yet soft and flexible so uh, I uh, Cardi didn't you know um, mean anything by it. Oh, I, I, um, I, I'm really clumsy too. You know, I, sometimes I just feel like, you know, I'm tripping over everything. It's everything. like everywhere I turn around, you know? Yes. Yeah, uh, Cardi too. Cardi feels like Cardi trips over everything. Really? Oh yes. my gosh, people make fun of me all the time. Uh, <laughs> Isn't Kenneth, it crazy? we're going to flash to the confessional for you. What are you thinking as you uh, look at all of this occurring? Or Cardi, what are you, what's going on in your mind right now? Oh, wow. Uh, Cardi feels like Cardi really made connection 
I mean, to say that Cardi's got it kind of in the box, it would be <laughs> understatement, because Cardi really has, has Tessa's, uh, we have locked eyes, much like boxes <laughs> get locked into shipping UPC logistic spreadsheets, you know? Cardi, Cardi is really feeling it. Cardi feels like Cardi could be a winner. Um, uh, I mean, honestly, what is more romantic than spreadsheets? Um, so uh, again, you all are, are locked in conversation, uh, really just connecting, having that moment, uh, both laughing and, and giggling away at uh, you know your your history of both being he 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 oh 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 so clumsy. Um, Kenneth, what are you doing right now? Well, I have been trying to get noticed by well, I'm I found a chaise lounge that I'm sitting on. And uh, I'm giving away my good side, which is where I have my left leg crossed over my right knee, and my pant leg is just kissing the top of my socks, which, uh, of course, have eagles on them. And I'm reading my favorite book, Whiplash and Hidden Soft Cell Tissue Injuries, Soft Tissue Injuries, uh, hoping that I can find a connection, because time is running out. <laughs> when all of a sudden, I can't help but notice that Dasha has a little bit of blood dripping from her calf uh, because of the broken wine glass. Mm -hmm. So I stroll up and uh, offer to examine it because I've seen many injuries before. And I'm not a doctor, but uh, I, of course, have seen many injuries. And uh, I think that uh, we might have a case on our hands here, not just with the producers of the show, but the makers of the wine glass, uh, as well as the drink that was inside of it, as well as the uh, air conditioning company that installed the what was currently keeping us cool at the moment, but also very dangerous. Uh, and I could go on and on and on. I, I, I really like suing people. Uh, I mean, this is this is a bold this is a bold bold move. So I'm assuming you're you're pitching this all to sort of Dustin in the moment as you're you know pointing to the the blood coming down her leg. Um, go ahead and roll for Brosif to see how compelling uh, this argument is. How many die? Uh, we'll say two. We'll two. say two. This is a bold move, but maybe not quite the the ratings getter that you're hoping it will be. Oh, I've got a six and a four. Okay. Uh, what's your number? Two. All right, so that is a fantastic success. Uh, she looks at you, and as you go to sort of, you're, you're pointing at the blood, and she she's like, oh, sorry, grabs a grabs a napkin and starts to dab it. Uh, and as you sort of lay out all of these options, uh, she looks up and is and uh, breaks eye contact with you, Cardi, and now has has turned away, uh, leaving leaving you to the side. Uh, and uh, she looks at you, Kenneth, and says, oh, um, well, I mean, I don't um, I don't know that we need to take legal action, but uh. Wow, I mean, you just really, you're thinking about all the angles. I mean, I don't know that I, I think I've ever met someone who's just as strategic as you. I mean, that's, this is really, uh, you must be really smart. Yes, in uh, law school, people referred to me as Rhombus because I was a very angular fellow. Uh, oh, oh, I um, uh, is, is that good in law schools, I, I hope? Uh, it's always good to be recognized. Yeah, it's the kind of, that's just the kind of person I am. Uh, uh, and I, of course, recognized you. Uh, so tell me more about some of the cases you've tried. Uh, and uh, Kenneth, you and you and Dessa start chatting. Um, at this point in time, uh, Oswald, you're standing, I imagine, continuing to sort of look at uh, some of the Werther's originals that are out, um, Oswald. And one of the producers sort of slides up next to you and says, uh, uh, you know, if you really want to uh, get in there and get attention, you might want to start working together with one of these other folks. You know, she's uh, she's gonna get wise to not enjoy being interrupted. So uh, I don't know, maybe grab somebody and start working together. And uh, uh, Oswald goes, "Yes, we should have stronger unions. That's how I got into this mess in the first place." And uh, uh, he flashes his union card and says, uh, "Hell yeah, man! An injury to one is an injury to all. But uh, seriously, uh, hook up with somebody." Uh, and uh, Oswald makes his way across the floor to Cardi B and walks up and after a moment of awkward silence just goes uh, automation got you too, huh? It got me loving life <laughs> automation nation Cardi B shows automation card like, like union card but for automation 
see like this. <laughs> it looks like this. I see. Cardi sees it. Cardi sees it. It looks like Cardi birth to you, maybe, but Cardi <laughs> sees it. Oh, I've got to tell you, everyone's becoming so dependent on things running automatically, not having to do anything themselves. Yes, isn't it wonderful? Uh, in this moment, uh, Krenity, you're uh, trying to figure out another angle to work on this. You're maybe a little crestfallen, having found out that uh, the Bachelorette is slightly less connected than you thought that she was, when you realize that Red Schmeichel's looks a little familiar. Oh my god. Rhett? Rhett Schmeichels? Uh, <laughs> I sorry, I forgot that's my name. Rhett <laughs> is definitely my name. Um, Rhett, <laughs> why didn't you ever call me back? <laughs> uh, Credity, roll... Roll for Weiner, because uh, if this is indeed a lie, it's a smart one. Uh, so uh, I'm assuming the cameras are on you all. Uh, this is juicy, so roll three die and roll for Weiner. Okay. Oh, I got a four. Okay. I got a five. <laughs> and I got another five. Uh, and, and what is your number? Rem uh, remind me one more time. Oh, it's a four. Uh, so, uh, this is your chance to be just a, a real, a real human person. Uh, did you actually give Rhett your number, or are you just lying right now? Listen, I'm really sorry. I, I, I just want to make some good TV so I can really oh. get my face out there. I, uh, my company is not doing well, and I just, um, I know you have a really big profile, so I just figured you could help me out a little bit. Oh, you know what? You, I got a few things. Number one, that scared the <laughs> diabetes out of me nearly. You know what? I, <laughs> I thought I stood you up, and, and Rhett doesn't do that. Number number two, um, okay, don't tell anybody, but I'm really Brett Michaels. <laughs> I have money and can help you out. No. No <laughs> way. But don't tell anybody, okay? I'm the lead singer of Poison, okay? I won't tell any. I I never ever would have guessed. That's okay. amazing. Uh, Brett, you definitely know that there's a camera on you, uh, and talking about how much money you have might be one of the broiest things ever. So roll for Brosif. Roll three die for Brosif. All right, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, golly. All right, I got a four and two sixes. All right, that is a wild success. Uh, uh, so yeah, you you know, usually this is a pretty douchey thing to do, um, but I think uh, you hear an audible <gasps> from the producers because apparently there was one among them that didn't realize you were indeed Brett Michaels because they are 20 years old and you are ancient. Uh, oh. and, uh, and someone's like, this is going to be such good TV. Uh, and they and they do like a quick pan zoom in. Uh, Krenity and, and Brett, you are aware right now that there is a tight zoom on your interaction. Uh, what's happening? Um, I, I just want to make it clear that, um, actually my company is so, so good. Cowbrows Inc. is just on the rise. And there are so many cow friendships that I am personally responsible for. So just wanted to tell you that publicly, Rhett Schmeichels. Thank you. That is my name. It starts with an R. That's my favorite letter, and that's mm -hmm. why my name starts with it. I, I don't, I don't like. I, I'm a uh, pop star. I'm not a. Uh, I, I am Rhett. I am Rhett Schmeichel. No, that was such uh, a right. such a fun fib you told. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were just just Josh, and we go way back. I went to her county fair uh, a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. Before yeah, Rhett. Rhett is a is a, a total uh, visits Glencoe all the time, all the time. <laughs> yeah, I use the yogurt for my mustache. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> in the background, you all hear uh, a bell ringing, uh, and and uh, Hiss Kerrison walks up and says, uh, "The evening is coming to a close, so please, if you will, uh, everyone, uh, gather around to uh, begin to prep yourself uh, for the first rose ceremony of the evening." Uh, Oswald, let's go into the confessional and find out what you've been thinking about this entire evening. Tell us, Oswald, oh. what's on your brain? Well, uh, this isn't exactly my comfort zone. There's been lots of uh, new ideas put forth and lots of new people I've met, and I'm sort of out of practice with that. But, you know, I feel like I've really made some good connections. Now, I didn't come here to make friends, but I've got to tell you, Cardi B and I have already ex ex exchanged numbers. Now, I gave Cardi B my phone number and Cardi B rattled off a series of ones and zeros, but nonetheless, I feel like we've really started to find a positive middle ground. Uh, so you go into that first rose ceremony and uh, Dessa comes up, there's, uh, there's one rose on the plate uh, and she says, uh, you know, I, um, I, I really just, I talked to the producers and, you know, legendary love is different. We, we believe that love takes time. And so I just, I don't want to send any of you all home tonight. I want to keep all of you all. Is that okay? Hooray! Yes! Yeah. One. Yeah! Um, you know, and I, I think, so I've been thinking about it and I still, you know, I just, I want to acknowledge who I've got, um, I just feel like it's really caught my attention tonight um, and just who I really made a connection with. Uh, and she picks up the rose and, and Cardi, she turns to you when all of a sudden she makes eye contact with the producer just over your left shoulder and then goes, oh, and, and turns back over and presents the rose to Rhett Michaels or Rhett Schmeichels. Rhett, what do you do? <laughs> Uh, Thanks, then, babe. <laughs> uh, and she hands it to you. It's like, oh, uh, burping's funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was um, uh, great to meet all of you. I'm, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow morning. Um, there's going to be a, a little challenge to see if you all are ready to, you know, win my heart. Um, so have a good night, and I'll, I'll see you bright and early. Uh, and with that, she she leaves the room. You have uh, a couple of the producers uh, come for come forward. Uh, one sidles up next to you, Ken, and says, "Listen, I uh, just wanted to let you know uh, I do some freelance work, uh, so I could potentially film some of your commercials. But uh, you know, they say that personal injury attorneys really know how to make things seem like an accident." I know what you mean. Uh, I, I can certainly help you out with that. I mean, I don't, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to encourage you, you know, to do something you're not comfortable with, but, uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, contestants slip, fall, wake up the next morning. It seems like they just, uh, aren't able to compete. Uh, I don't know. I mean, take the chances you need to take. You know what I'm saying? Uh, of course I do. <laughs> Uh, and he, he feels uh, confident that you would uh, file all of his torts accordingly. Um, Ken, with this information, is there anything that you want to do? Anything nefarious that you want to get up to? Yes. So uh, I couldn't help but notice that Oswald seems to have a hard time getting around. Uh, and Because I think they believe we're of the same age group. We, they've put us in the room together. Yep, absolutely. It's called Bottom Bunk uh, because that's the kind of guy I am. And uh, I've, <laughs> I've put some uh, grease on each of the stairs that go down from his bunk. <laughs> so in hopes of both uh, eliminating him from the show and taking his case. Uh, you know, that's that's a two for us. So this is this is actually pretty. This is very thoughtful, almost conniving, I would say. So Ken, uh, Kenneth, I'm going to have you actually roll for Weiner. Uh, you can use three die because again, your personal, you know, you you know how to properly injure someone from having all studied all these things, and this would be very good TV. So roll three, but you're going to need to roll for Weiner. So you will have to roll under your under your number. Okay, here I go. Ooh, well. I've got a six, a one, and a three. My uh, and what's your number? Two. Okay. All right. Uh, so, 
Oswald, you walk in to see Kenneth sort of uh, immediately sort of walking away from the ladder that goes up to the top bunk. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, well, it's very late in the evening. And uh, I should, you know, I, I, I ate dinner hours ago, so I'm ready to call it a night. So I'm going to climb straight into bed. Uh, great. Uh, so your, your, your foot hits that step and mm -hmm. there's a wiggle. Uh, uh, what do you do as you feel yourself suddenly become unstable on the ladder? Uh, I think back to my first days in my first projection booth where that projector was so uh, clunky and poorly maintained that it just sprayed oil all over the floor which ran down the stairs from the booth straight into the popcorn machine. It was basically the most efficient system we could come up with. So I'm very used to navigating oily, slippery steps. Uh, well, I mean, with that, with that background and that experience, we're going to say go ahead and roll for Weiner and uh, roll, roll three to see if you can avoid uh, taking an untimely, an untimely spill. A five, a two, and a two. All right, and what's your number? Five. All right, uh, you do something like a normal human being. Oswald, what do you do to deal with the situation? Uh, I uh, take a second, my, my foot slides, but instead of sliding off the step, it slides to the side of the ladder, climbing up the bunk bed, and wedges itself against the rail, so I regain my balance for a moment. And after a tense few seconds, I just go, ha ha ha, ah, the old slippery steps routine. Uh, me and my friends invented that one. Good one, Kenneth. Good one. And then uh, leans over to give a high five to, to Kenneth. And, th and then almost loses his balance again, but then grabs onto the rails. And goes, all right, but you just watch your back. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Uh the producers use that uh, supercut uh, to make it seem like you're very threatening and aggro in the previews for next week's episode. Um, so, uh, Kennedy and Cardi, you all are actually rooming together. Um, uh, you know, they, they sorted people for better or for worse by gender. Uh, and, and Cardi, when presented with the gender box, you just colored all of them in uh, because you recognized all of them apply. Uh, the boxes, that is. Uh, so, Kennedy. Cardi, uh, what's your conversation like this evening? Um, Cardi, I, I don't, I, I, please, if I am being offensive, please let me know. Um, are your cardboard eyebrows natural? Yes. <laughs> yes, they are. Cardi's eyebrows are natural. All of Cardi is natural. Even... Cardi's rock hard corrugations. Oh, Doesn't wow. need to work out natural core strength. Are you serious? You'd never have to work out? No. Cardi that's never like, works out. That's like so unfair. Like, good for you, but like, oh my God, I'm so jealous. <laughs> I have a permanent membership at Orange Theory, so like, I work out like. Seven days a week, normally. <laughs> I love uh, orange. Uh, both of you all, uh, because you're talking about Orange Theory and Orange Theory related things, roll for Weiner to see just how obnoxious it is. If you'd be talking about CrossFit, you would have rolled for Brosif. <laughs> uh, you need to roll below your number. I got a six. Cardi okay. rolled a five. Okay. Uh, Cardi, you do something like a normal box person sincerely would do. Uh, how do you respond to this little exercise off? Wow. You've got a great creases to start. I think you're <laughs> on your way to even, should I say it, double corrugation. <laughs> That's how fit I think you can be. I see that inside of you. Oh my God, that's like the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me, <laughs> including uh, trainers that I have paid money. <laughs> sometimes uh -huh. you just need to think outside of the box. <laughs> oh my uh, God. 
That interaction is picked up by the producers and edited uh, such that it seems like there's a little bit of spark between the two of you and the internet begins to immediately ship uh, Krenaby. Uh, it's all over Twitter. Uh, yeah, you all are being shipped as a potential couple. My God. Uh, but <laughs> it's true. You know, honestly, Cardi, you're the easiest of ships out of oh. all of them. You know what uh, the hardest ship is of all? Relationship. That? True words were never, were never spoken. Everyone drink. Whoever you are, wherever you are, just drink to that. Uh, Rhett, where do you pass out in the mansion? Because I'm assuming that you don't, you hit that craft services table hard and you don't actually make it back to bed. Yeah, I'm like totes chilling. I'm like kind of wet because I was like in the hot tub with my clothes on. And then I found a hammock. That's why I've been chilling in that hammock. That tracks. Uh, early next morning, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, gardening staff finds you. Uh, you're woken up by a leaf blower just blowing directly into your face and into your hair. Uh, you wake up with a start. You sort of do a, like, like roll and, like, thump out of the hammock. Um, roll for Brosif to see just how stupid you look. <laughs> okay. Uh. All right, and again, you need to roll above your number. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. I, I, uh, do we need one dice or three? Uh, we're gonna say three. This could be some pretty good TV. All right, cool. Cause I got two fours and a two. Great. And your number is a three. All right, so, uh, you know, it, like, whips around a couple of times. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't completely eject you out of it, but there's there's kind of a, kind of a couple limbs. Uh, so when the producers do the cut, they play the Yaki Sack soundtrack in the background. Uh, and <laughs> for years after this, you're actually a really popular gif. Uh, oh. so, so so that's good, at least. Oh, so um, I don't need to go on the mass Singer. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Noted. Not not yet. Um, but we're going to jump straight to the confessional booth. Uh, Kredity, how are you feeling about your chances this morning, going into the next day of Legendary Love? I feel like I stand a real chance. I got the first impression rose, which means I must have done something right. <laughs> but honestly, I'm a little nervous. Um, shortly before I came on the show, I was kind of in a weird place and I tried making a cat fishing account on cow brows and I didn't get a single cow friend match. And like, I know I was technically lying to the other cows, but still it hurt my feelings. And uh, I just, I just hope that does is different, you know? You know, that's what we all hope for. Yeah. That's what we all hope for really. Uh, so it's, the morning. Uh, everyone's gathered around uh, for for breakfast. Uh, Kenneth, however, before you came down, you found that when you opened the top drawer of your bureau, all of your uh, pressed socks were not lined up. It was indeed all of your slacks and your backup fedora and said, someone swapped the contents of your drawers. Has there been sabotage in the house? I don't believe you. I'm sitting here with nothing but ankle garters. What? <laughs> I can't go to breakfast like this. Uh, so you're 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 staying up there in your room because you're you're sort of like you're you're feeling unprepared for the day. No, no, of course not. Uh, Kenneth Allen will never be thwarted. Uh, remember when I <laughs> one of my fedoras was stolen, uh, and I do not litigate without one. So I made one out of a briefcase. So, of course, I'm going to think on my feet, which is what a good lawyer does, and I'm going to make a uh, toga out of a the sheets that I have here. This will, of course, both show off my calves, which I've been working on extensively, and also uh, give me another chance to talk about uh, famous <laughs> symbols of law. Uh, you know, and that is your bread and butter. Um, that's an audacious move, Ken. I'm going to have you roll three die for Brosif. So you need to roll over your number uh, right, to see to see how successful this is going to be. But I, I think there's a good chance. All right. Wait, that didn't. All right, here we go. I've got a four, a three, and a six. Okay, and what's your number? Two. 
Okay, uh, that's a wild, wild success. Uh, what's the color of the sheet that you use as a toga, Ken? Um, it's like a, it, it's, it's navy blue, but it is where that kind that sort of, it has stripes that some mm -hmm. are shimmery and some are kind of dull. Uh, it actually looks, it, it looks impressive and it's actually really, really flattering, really brings out your eyes. Uh, so as you come down the steps, uh, you see the rest of the, the rest of the suitors are, are, you know, gathered around Dessa, who uh, again is in her, you know, traditional, her hair is wrapped up. She's, she's wearing sort of sporty athletic wear. Uh, she looks great. Uh, and, uh, she comes down and she looks up at you instead of being aghast, she starts to giggle and goes, oh my gosh, Ken, I, I mean, I guess the producers told you, but that's just perfect for the challenge today. You're so clever. Oh gosh, you're so smart. That's amazing. Actually. You know what? You you get a rose just for being on the ball. And she like reaches over and uh, and picks up a rose and hands it to you. So it's a we'll call it a great start to the morning rose. Um, it's just like you knew. Um, all right. Well, I guess Ken already knows or he guessed it. I mean, I did talk about where I was from last night. Um, but our first challenge is a little bit of an obstacle course out on the yard here. Um, as we all know, um, my family's from Greece, and I'm a, a proud, you know, Grecian American. Um, and so we're going to do a little, a little take on the, you know, the the twelve labors of Hercules, because, you know, love, you've got to, you know, be willing to to go the distance for it. No, nobody. I liked it. <laughs> uh, Crinity, uh, as soon as you start laughing, uh, she makes eye contact with you and was like, oh, I'm glad someone gets it. It's my favorite Disney movie. Oh um, my gosh. The muses don't get me started. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't say I'm in love. Could it be any better? It's just so wonderful. And don't uh, get me started on Mickey's Christmas Carol. Huh? Huh? Um, Oswald, trying to aggressively insert yourself into a conversation is a bit of a whiner move, but impressive. Go ahead and roll all three. Um, uh, and again, you want to roll under your number, and we'll see how successful you are at uh, yeah, el elbowing into that moment. All right, well, my number's a five, and I rolled a four, a two, and a six. Okay, all right, that's a, that's a decent success. So as soon as you say that, she sort of turns around and goes, oh... <laughs> Really? I, I like The Muppet Christmas Carol a little bit better, but that one's so good, too. Ugh, are you a fan of old movies? Am I a, fa a fan of old movies? Why, is Butter a fan of popcorn? Oh, you're so funny. And she, she grabs your arm as you all start to go walk outside. Ow. Um, <laughs> do you bruise immediately, Oswald? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, like, a, like an her? avocado at the bottom of a bag. Oh, just sorry. You're. I, I'm assuming you're sort of gritting through it. Are you trying oh, to put mm -hmm. up with the pain? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Cardi, everyone is making a connection except you. What are you going to do right now? Cardi is going to run to the end of the walkway outside, and Cardi is going to jump into the big fountain out there by all the topiaries. Oh, this is. This is a bold, bold move. So bold, in fact, and so aggressive. I would say it's a brosif move. Uh, Cardi, roll for brosif. Roll three. Uh, again, as a logistics specialist, I would assume you would know just all the right angles. But uh, roll three. And a reminder, you need to roll over your number, which I believe is five. Yeah. Don't worry. Of all the angles, Cardi knows the right angles. Okay, Cardi rolls now. Six, five, five. Oh, For real. what a fantastic, fantastic success. Um, Cardi, uh, the yeah. water arcs out in sort of like this incredibly impressive shot. All the cameras spin to you and you see Dessa turn around and see you sort of floating in the fountain and she sees you start to sag a little bit and immediately pushes Oswald to the side and sprints over, dives into the fountain and pulls you out and says, I, I'm so worried. I know you said you couldn't swim last night. Um, here's your chance to have a real moment. Cardi, what do you do? Thank you. Nobody has ever cared about me. Only what's on the inside. But now, 
Now someone knows how to take care of guarding me. <laughs> Dessa, Dessa stands there and stops and says, you know, I think, I think the best relationships are ones where people aren't afraid to take care of, e of each other. Cardi then slowly lifts one saggy or soggy uh, little cardboard hand and gently places it along the cheek of Tessa. <laughs> she she reaches up and touches it as well, and you both you both start to lean both start to lean in slowly but surely. Rhett Michaels, what are you gonna do? Whoa! Hey, I'm actually taking a quick. Uh, cat nap on the other side of the fountain there uh, so i uh i just do some sp splooshy splooshies and uh hey uh let's, what's going on friends i found this fedora do you, uh lying around in a drawer does any, anybody want to wear it or something i don't know uh a crest of water psh, hits uh, Cardi, uh, you and Dessa both at the same time, uh, the moment's broken, um, but b before she helps you out of the fountain, she takes that soggy cardboard hand, squeezes it, and does the thumb rub, and says, I'm just, I'm so glad you're here. This is, this is like the gift I always wanted. I, <laughs> if you absolutely, positively need me to be here, any night, Cardi can. <laughs> she, You're the uh, arrow to Cardi's spoon. Uh, and, and again, there's there's a pause. Uh, again, Oswald, you're seeing uh, your your potential lady love having a moment with someone else. What do you do? Uh, <clears throat> there's a brief moment where Oswald's deeply shaken by this. Things seem to be going so well. But then he remembered every movie that's ever been made and knows that eventually his time's coming back. And so he does. Oh, uh, and so he takes a step forward as if to, to interject and then just slowly crosses his arms and just goes, the shop around the corner, the shop around the corner, it's all going to work out fine. <laughs> Uh, one of the producers then does uh, does a, a, a quick a quick tight zoom in and goes, "Are you telling me that you've seen you've got mail?" Mm. Oh no, I haven't been home in days. I don't know if I have mail or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and the producer says he's playing it cool. This guy, he's playing it real cool. Um, Crenity, you're watching all of this happen. Let's take you straight to the confessional. What are you thinking right now? How are you feeling about your chances? Um, I don't feel confident right now because I'm doing everything I can possibly think of, talking about how wildly successful all of my great ideas are and just showing up and generally being awesome and somehow Dessa isn't in love with me yet and I don't get it. <laughs> um, you're having a bit of an existential crisis. Um, we've got to see if you're going to be able to pull to pull through this. Um, Krenity, go ahead and roll for Weiner um, because <laughs> the producers are definitely sensing that you're, you're starting to lose it. So they're swarming like so many sharks to blood in the water. Roll three dice and you need to roll under your number. Okay, I got a six. I got a five. Ooh. And I got a two. Okay, all right, all right. And your number, Crenity, was? It's four. My number is four. Okay, so you, you start to lose it. You start to lose it when you look up and you see a camera pointing directly at you and you realize that this is your chance to plug cow brows. What do you do? Oh my gosh. I definitely skipped eating my cow brows this morning. That's why I'm in such a bad mood. <laughs> if only I had some perfect drinkable yogurt that also tinted my brows. Breakfast and beauty in one? Oh my gosh, sign me up. <laughs> 
Uh, and they pan off you, but not before that perfect infomercial uh, made it straight straight onto television. Um, Cardi, you've climbed out of the fountain. Uh, Dust is still holding your little floggy, uh, soggy cardboard hand uh, as you all walk out into the yard, where you indeed do see a giant um, obstacle course is set up uh, with a couple of different stations and things like that. You see there's sort of like a little track over there's a, a, a big, a giant sort of box where you can hear some, some noises coming from. Uh, and then another area, you see what looks like a bunch of inflatables, or there's a bunch of sort of air fans set up. Uh, looks like there's some inflatables ready to, to get kicked going. Um, uh, a giant mud pit and then a rock wall. Uh, so Dessa walks you all up there and says, all right, so we all know it's important to be able to willing to do epic things for love. So you're going to see right now, these are versions of Hercules's labors. So um, each one has its own particular um, reward. Um, and But at the end of the day, you can get a rose for successfully completing each of them. But the first person to reach my heart, and she gestures up to the seat at the top of the rock wall, um, will receive um, a rose as well. So the first thing, obviously, is going to be a sprint to outrun the Serenium Deer, the fastest one. You'll all going to run a 50 yard dash together. The one will receive a rose. Then you'll have to slay the Nemean Lion by finding the single kitten in this box of kittens that has a golden collar. You'll then take that lion and then have to clean up the Aegean stables. So you'll have to dig through this whole mud pit to find the, the rose underneath it. And then finally climb this rock wall to get one of Hesperia's golden apples to present to me. Well, again, everyone, there's a chance to receive a specific rose for every activity that you win. But at the end of the day, what matters is the one who gets to me first. Are you all ready? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Rhett, you're not. Why are you not ready right now? Um, I'm very hungover. <laughs> um, but I, I... Just in case, I do have a song if you need me to sing you a song. Uh, at that note, uh, specifically, one of the producers is like, it's now or never, buddy. You gotta get up there. Just start singing. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Red stands up because Red's still in the fountain um, sitting there <laughs> in his clothes. And uh, Rhett just says, like, all right, baby, uh, this is a totally original song written just <laughs> for you. <clears throat> all my clothes have been worn. <laughs> That's why I am wearing the same, same clothes that I wore yesterday. <laughs> And that's all I wrote so far. Uh, Rhett, uh, trying to get the attention uh, of a woman using an original song uh, is up there on the whiner list. Uh, go ahead and roll for whiner. <laughs> Meaning you need to roll <laughs> under. You uh, also had a guitar inexplicably and didn't actually ask if anyone wanted to hear it. Um, so, uh, like every other straight man, <laughs> Um, go ahead and roll for Weiner. Uh, roll two die, and again, you need to try to get under your number. All right. I got a six and a two. Okay, and your number is? Three. Okay, all right. It's a partial success. Um, uh -huh. So we'll say that it succeeded um, in as much as the fact that Dussa looks up, distracted, uh, drops Cardi B's cardboard hand and turns around and is sort of like, wait, what? I can't. Can you just sing that one more time? I, I didn't. I didn't quite hear it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hold on, let me get out of the fountain and plug my guitar in. It was just not plugged in at all to my portable amp on wheels. Uh, here. <laughs> one of the producers just automatically brings it out. He's also my roadie. All right, cool. All right, all right. Sing it if you know it, everybody. All oh, my, my clothes, clothes have been, been worn. <laughs> and that's why I'm uh, wearing, wearing the same, same. thing <laughs> that I wore yesterday. Yesterday. I think that's it. I think that was what it was. 
<laughs> yeah, so the single uh, actually launches on iTunes that evening uh, and gets a surprisingly high amount of purchases. Uh, so you get a couple more residuals in your pocket, which is great. Um, uh, having put your, your guitar down, you're all lined up at the start uh, and pff, gun goes off. What's everybody doing? Cardi tucks Cardi's head in and starts to soggily roll. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Uh, you're rolling forward. Um, uh, while I definitely could run this due to my frequent trips to Orange Theory, um, I decide to conserve my energy for the later challenges. And so I whistle really loud and my two cow friends, uh, Bessie and Carmilla, they, they come trotting up. And I, I stand on top and on top of them again and trot across the the first uh, Ooh. obstacle. All right, roll roll for whiner. Uh, using the excuse of the fact that you're saving your energy to cheat is definitely a whining <laughs> move. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, roll for whiner. Roll three die and try to get under your number. Okay. Um, I got a four. Okay. I got a one. <laughs> And I got another one. All right. Uh, this is a success. Those cows are ready to go. You hop on there, and they're off at a commanding lead. Um, Rhett, Ken, and Oswald, what are you all doing? Well, uh, Oswald immediately bypasses a bunch of the other obstacles and goes straight for that climbing wall. Uh, rolls up his sleeves, looks up at the top, spits in both of his hands, then wipes his hands off on his shirt because that's disgusting. Yeah. And then begins the ascent to the top for that golden apple. Uh, Oswald, this is a bold, bold thing that you've mm -hmm. done. Uh, this is very ambitious. Roll for Brosif. Roll three die and try to get over your number. All right, my number is a five. Mm -hmm. uh, I rolled a four, a one, and a one. Ooh, Oswald. That's all the information I can give. Uh, you you climb on, and you are still in the same position on the wall, but you feel, you feel like you are really making progress. Um, <laughs> Kenneth, what are you doing? Oh, well, I, I, I am really focusing on the sprint. But unfortunately, I was still wearing the toga I had fashioned mm -hmm. out of a... Uh, blue uh, standard size bed sheet and that's just flown off into the wind uh, but that unfazed I'm still running wearing nothing but a crisp pair of white BVDs and of course ink uh, garters around my calves uh, I'm, I'm thinking people are going to be impressed because I've spent many an afternoon at the gym in the office building uh, you know, you know, Ken, I don't know that there is a more brosif thing that you can be doing. Roll for Brosif. Uh, roll three. Uh, uh, again, because all of those days of uh, standing standing up and chasing after ambulances, again, that's, that's giving you some shapely calves. That's my cardio. Uh, so roll, roll three and try to get over your number. I've got a one, a six, and a five. Okay. Uh, what's your number, Kenneth? Two. All right, uh, that is a success. Uh, you know, Krenity is still out ahead of you simply because, again, she's on two cows, but uh, you're making good time, uh, and there's definitely some zoom-ins on those calf muscles, and uh, you notice that evening you're getting a lot, a lot of emails from middle-aged ladies back in the hometown seeking to uh, see if you're interested in divorce law. Uh, so it's paying off. Uh, Rhett, what are you doing right now? Oh, I'm just chilling in the grass playing with kittens. All right. So you skip straight to the uh, the Nemean lions, uh, which is indeed just a it's a giant container just full of probably about 20 just cute, cute little squirming quit kittens just squirming around. Uh, again, Oswald, you're still on the rock wall, desperately trying to make some progress. Uh, right. You've gone straight to the kittens. Uh, Krenity, you manage again to to win the dash. You're given a rose by a producer as you sort of cross that line. Uh, Cardi B, Ken, Rhett, uh, Krenity, I'm assuming you're all at the container of kittens. What would you all like to do? I um, straight up pocketed that gold, uh, collar and, and, and put it under my stolen fedora. Apparently I'm a kleptomaniac now. Okay. Uh, roll for Brosif to see if anybody noticed. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, roll two. Okay. <laughs> I got a two and a one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you you think that you're being very, very suave. Um, but Cardi, you absolutely see what's happening. Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, Cardi swings body towards Red. And because Cardi is so soggy, and there are all these tiny little <laughs> pussycats nearby, <laughs> Cardi gets everything so wet and gushy. And in that, Cardi is able to roll around and try to roll over the golden necklace from the little pussycats. <laughs> Uh, Cardi sort of rolls, manages to uh, magically sort of roll on top of the kittens without hurting a single one of them. Uh, they are so very they are, wet, but love. They are, they're wet ass pussies. They are. Uh, <laughs> that's just what happened as a result. Uh, what Cardi B does. Uh, but manages to just then snatch, snatch the collar out of Rhett's hand. Um, uh, Kenneth Kennedy, upon seeing that Cardi, uh, has the color and has just been given a rose by the producers, uh, what, what do you all want to do? Um, I would like to open up a container of cow brows and share it with the kittens, just because I also want to see what kitten eyebrows are going to look like on camera. <laughs> uh, roll for, roll for Bliner. Okay. Uh, how many dice? Uh, we'll say, we'll say three. Yeah, we'll say three. Okay. Okay. Um, I got a six. Um, I got a one. Mm -hmm. And I got a five. Okay. Uh, you know, cats and yogurt, you'd think it would mix, but they apparently don't like their milk fermented. Um, so one of, one of them sort of curls, curls up and, and like gets close to you, but the rest of them are like... Hissing and, and sort of batting and combative, but one little guy, one little guy is into that that cowbell's yogurt and just curls curls right up on your lap. Now you have a new best friend if you want. Oh my god, that's so cute! Yes, great. You have a kitten now. Congrats. I love you it. Might not Thank have you. love, but you've got a kitten. Um, I'm already winning. <laughs> back to you on the rock wall. Let's roll again for Brosif to see if you've made any progress at all in this moment. All right. Oswald once again spits into both of his hands, shakes his head because he can't believe he did that again. It's so gross. Wipes everything off on his shirt and then uh, looks up at the wall and goes, Guns of Navarone! And then... <laughs> uh, how many am I rolling again? Uh, you're rolling three and you're trying oh. to get over your number. Well, I rolled a one, a one, and a six. Yeah, so you... You you go to lift up and make progress. At that point in time, uh, all but one hand just completely, your grip slackens and you start to swing. But thankfully, the momentum actually sort of scoops you over into another position and you manage to secure. You have not progressed at all, but you're in a different hold on that rock wall. And uh, you, you just hear, a lateral move! <laughs> Uh, and the producers are just, it's a, it's a tight shot. It's a tight shot right now. Um, uh, Kenneth, uh, you know, they've, they've beaten, uh, they've beaten the, uh, the, the Nemean lion, uh, that challenge is over. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to proceed to the next one? Uh, or, or do you want to keep going? I want to proceed to the next one. All right. You are faced with a giant, mud pit, uh, and you've been told that you need to wait around until you find the rose uh, within. What do you do? I dive right in. All I'm right. Appropriately. Uh, uh, I mean, again, this is a man in his BVDs. He's, he is unafraid. Uh, roll, roll. Um, uh, and your and your sock cutters, of course. Uh, forgive me. Uh, you know, you're a, a personal injury lawyer. You're not afraid to just dive around in muck. Roll three for Brosif to see how successful you are. All right. There we go. Ooh, two, four, two. Okay, and your number? Two. Okay, uh, so it's uh, one success and several other just solid you solid numbers. You, you're gonna act like just a, a normal, just a normal human being with actual empathy. Uh, what do you do right now, Kenneth? Well, I find the rose, and I already have it. Um, and I, I, you know, I feel like Oswald might be here for the right reasons. So <gasps> I, I give it to him. 
in a beautiful display and the producers are just tight on the shot. You actually, you walk over and I'm assuming you just sort of like tuck it into his coat pocket. Um, uh, Kenneth, uh, now that you're in the confessional, tell us all about how you feel. Why did you do that? Well, it's simple. People like a selfless guy. That's uh, how I, I usually tell juries about my many charitable causes that I am involved with prior to uh, starting the case. And I falsely accused Oswald, not to his face, but in my mind, of mm -hmm. stealing my clothes. It was the most obvious choice. I did try to take him out, and yet it was Rhett Michaels. So that's who I'm coming for. <laughs> uh, it's on. It's on. Uh, Oswald, you've got a rose in your pocket. Uh, the cleaning of the Aegean stables is now over, meaning that there is one final challenge left, which is indeed the rock wall, which Oswald is al already on, hasn't moved in the in the past 10 minutes, but, but he's there. Uh, what are you all doing? Uh, Cardi well, is running up really fast to wall, uh, but doesn't quite have strong enough hands to climb. So Cardi just throws herself against wall. I want I want to help Cardi. Okay, Kennedy, tell us how. Cardi said the nicest thing to me, and I I just can't shake it. And I I just I'm really rooting for Cardi. So I I whistle for for Bessie and Carmilla, <laughs> and they run over to give Cardi B a boost. Um. You know, not only is this a deeply selfless act, but it's also some really convenient self-promotion because I'm assuming that the cows both have like the logo of cow brows on their side, uh, you know, like sprayed into the the, the cow spots. Yeah. Um, so not only is this just a, a beautiful act of really sort of seeing and supporting someone in pursuit of the thing that they love the most, it's mm -hmm. a great option for, for branding. Go ahead and roll three dice with Weiner. So try to roll under your number. Ooh, okay. Um, I got a two, a three, oh. and another three. Um, this is wildly successful. Um, Cardi, just as you hit the wall and you start to slowly slide down and you think, oh no, if only I didn't just have an exoskeleton, you, you feel a snuffling noise and then two little cow hut noses just pop right under your toes and lift you up so that your, your head just starts to peek over the top of the wall and you see Dessa Gordon standing there and she goes, I was hoping it would be you. And, and Oswald reaches over with one free hand and just gently, punk, <laughs> gives one last little boost. Uh, Cardi, you're standing on the platform looking, looking at the woman, presumably, of your dreams. What do you do? Tessa, since the moment Cardi saw you, Cardi knew that you were more than ochre. <laughs> Cardi, you're does this is you're just oh it's okay I understand I get really choked up when I get emotional too. Cardi wipes tears from face, but maybe just water from fountain. Who knows? Cardi looks back with glistening buttons into Tessa's dark eyes, and Cardi says. Signs your delivered baby. Cards are yours. Uh, the, you hear somewhere off the side, one of the producers goes, Oh God, it's really happening. It's really actually happening. Um, and uh, and Dessa takes a step forward and you all lock eyes and you can sense the moments happening again. You're both starting to lean forward. Uh, Kenneth, Oswald, and Kennedy, I can only imagine you all are in deep support. Rhett Michaels, what are you doing? Oh, I totally misinterpreted what the rock wall meant, and I'm plugging in my guitar again. <laughs> and we're getting a, a key change encore of all my clothes have been worn. Um, but I cranked my amp up to 11. <laughs> and... And I'm and I'm standing in the middle of the field singing. Ah, 
all my clothes have been worn. And I'm saying, take me, dress up. I'm yours. <laughs> You're hot. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, roll, roll plus brosif for that truly extraordinary display of brosifness. Oh, heck yeah, I will. So my number's a three, and I got two threes and a six. Oh, so it is an automatic success. However, in this moment, you actually do something normal and human. Rhett Michaels, what does that look like? Oh, Rhett Michaels totally starts crying. And as <laughs> Rhett starts crying, I reach into my pocket and say, Dressa, I haven't talked to you very much. But I love you so much, and I pull out a ring. <laughs> and I say, Dreza, this is a really big ring, and a lot of people have worn it, but I really want you to be the last one to wear it. Uh, she stops. She's shocked. Um, she looks at you, Cardi, and says, I'm... I'm sorry, I just, um, I need to take time for all of my relationships, but, but please, just know that what we have is real. Uh, and she walks across the field, and she is making really sustained eye contact with you, Rhett Michaels. She stops and, and looks at everyone and says, okay, well, I think, I think this is sort of the big moment, you know, when we really just need to, to talk about who's, who's here for the right reasons. You know, I, I know what it's like to be on the other side of this, and, and to know what an emotional roller coaster it could be, so... I want to give you all the opportunity if if you're ready to, you know, go on and, and chase other pastures. She looks at you, Krenity. That's okay. Um, but I just need to know who's who's really here for my heart before I make some of these big decisions. Um, Dessa, I saw your beautiful pointed eye contact and I just, I think I, I do see you more as a cow brows friend, but I hope we can still stay close. Oh, absolutely. I hope that you're one of my most stable friends. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> you're so great. You're so great. No, you're so great. No, you're, you're so, great. so great. No, you're, you're so, so great. great. Oh, you're oh my so great. God. <laughs> um, you're friended. Uh, she definitely uh, starts liking your post on Instagram and cow brows sees traffic through the roof within 24 hours. Um, but the producers go ahead and start to escort you off stage. Uh, Yay. <laughs> um, Cardi, you've, I'm assuming, raised your little cardboard hand and been like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here for it. Cardi, and it to win it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Kenneth, Oswald, what about you all? Well, I do think that you're a very, very sweet, sweet girl, Dessa. I, um, I'm more, I realized I'm more focused on my career right now. And uh, I've just uh, actually re recently received a call. Uh, I've been added to the daytime dream team. Uh, it's me, Lerner, and Ro. Uh, we're That's going so to be, wonderful. Yes, we're going to be arguing in the, uh, or I, I should say taking people in the class action lawsuit for the uh, Johnson & Johnson talcum powder case. So it's a really big step in my career uh she she holds your hands and it's just sort of like i'm just so i i feel like i've learned so much from you in just a short time and i i'm so glad to know that i i have a friend on the right side of justice and i will look you up if i never need legal counsel and if you're ever in louisville kentucky look up daryl the hammer isaacs because his billboards are all over the entirety of i-64 and it's fucking ridiculous that's right, Daryl the Hammer Isaacs. I want you to know I said it out loud and on the internet. Um, and inexplicably, you have no idea what this reference is, but you sense that it's personally important to someone. Uh, and uh, the producers uh, escort you off the set. Uh, Oswald, what about you? Well, I have to admit that seeing the connection that you just made with some of these other contestants makes me think that well, maybe it is time for me to step aside and let a different generation go forward to find romance. However, there's one movie that sticks out in my mind about two people who are separated perhaps by ex experience or, or years, 
but things worked out okay for them as far as I know. I never did see the last reel of Sunset Boulevard, but what a wonderful story it was, and I just have to hope that mine plays out the same. Uh, and she, she holds your hand and says, you are the classiest guy I know, and, you know, in my celluloid dreams, it'll always be you. Oh! Uh, and you, you feel your finger bones start to crush. She lets go, uh, and they escort you, escort you off the set. Um, Cardi, it's down to you and Rhett Michaels. Um, at this point in time, you see his Karrison comes forward and says, Now, does I, if I may, I think the most important thing at this point in time is to ask ourselves who can really take the real you. You know, you're a fantastic woman who has a lot of hopes and dreams, but let's talk about the fact that first Cy and then Percy all did you dirty. So you really need to be honest with these folks before at the end of the day you pick the one that's going to be together with you forever. Suitors deserve the truth. And she she sort of lowers her head and says, okay, I think that I think that makes sense. So um I think you all need to see the real me. What I want is really a legendary love, but I I have to be honest with you all. And she goes to unwrap her hair. And in that moment, you see snakes coming straight out of them. Uh, and in this moment, Rhett Michaels, a few things slide through your brain. Uh, you realize that this entire set has just been covered in statues, lots of statues, seemingly aggressively a large amount of statues for just a standard TV set. And the snakes start to, to twist and move uh, and turn around and look at you. <laughs> Rhett Michaels, roll for Brosif to see how you deal with the real Deusa Gordon. <laughs> Oh, frick, dude. I thought I had a secret. All right. <laughs> All right. So just a reminder, my number's three. I got two twos and a three. Mm -hmm. So, Brett, as you slowly feel yourself start to calcify, you have one moment to say something human and real. What is it? Oh, my clothes have been worn. Uh, and, and Rhett, what is the pose that you freeze in at the end of the day? Uh, diabetes. <laughs> there you go. Just holding a diet soda can out. Uh, now, of course, Cardi, Dessa turns around to you and you're a cardboard box. You're not a person. You're completely unaffected by this, and she sees that you are still moving, that you're not made of stone, and, and she reaches out and holds your hand and goes, it's, I always wanted it to be you. Is this really it? Is this the love that I've been waiting for? Yes, and for clarification, Cardi is being affected by this. Being oh, no. affected by it. Cardi feels love. Cardi uh, knows love. And uh, Dessa drops down, takes the ring out of Brett Michael's hand, throws the box over her shoulder and says, I can't wait to spend the rest of an eternity or at least until your packaging breaks down with you uh, and slides the ring onto your finger. Do you accept? Cardi accepts. Cardi accepts. <laughs> uh, and you all lean in. Finally, no one's stopping it. Oh, it's a kiss oh. for the centuries. It's a kiss for the centuries. Uh, this is uh, easily the most stellar of all seasons of Legendary Love in, in which the legends uh, find love with normal mortals. Um, let's bring all of our contestants back to the screen uh, because we're at the reunion show now. Um, uh, His Carrington is, is doing follow-up interviews. Um, they've rolled out a Rhett Michael statue, uh, who's just still standing in the background. Uh, Dusa has has wrapped her hair up, and so she's sitting on a couch uh, holding Cardi's hand. Uh, and you know, uh, uh, His just says, "We'd like to hear from everyone what you've been up to." Uh, Grenady, how have things been since the show aired? Um, things have been amazing. Um. 
First of all, my little kitten lactose is growing so big and strong. And um, our sales have been skyrocketing since the the episodes aired. Um, and I have to say, I'm really glad that Jissa, you and I formed a friendship and not a statue and and legend ship because our lunches mean the world to me. I, you know, I tell people I found eternal love, but more importantly, I found friendship love as well. This is just, oh, I'm so glad that you're in my life. Oh my God, um, I'm so thankful for you. Oh, I'm, so glad that, I'm so thankful for you. Um, <laughs> Kenneth, uh, how have you been since the show aired? Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, of course, we've got a lot of money out of Johnson & Johnson, which uh, not the best time to do that, I will admit, but uh, I mean, they made some bad talcum powder. Uh, I also, uh, I finally got to pen my memoirs. Uh, yes. Uh, title of my book, in case you haven't read it yet, is uh, Don't Take This Personal, But I'm Here to Tell You About Personal Injury. The Kenneth <laughs> Allen story. Uh, and it, it climbed the charts. It climbed the charts. Uh, it is actually the number one book released by personal injury attorneys uh, uh, serving in, in the... In the Cook County area, uh, specific uh, on a Wednesday. Wednesday, uh, specializing in shoulder injuries. Yeah, I mean it's number one on the charts. It's a bestseller. With an opening it's a best by Peter Francis Duracy. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I mean, it's it's a lifetime dream. Um, Oswald, uh, where where has life found you? Uh, how have you been since the show aired? Well, Oswald, and hoping to get more in touch to see where things went wrong, went back and watched both versions of Clash of the Titans and really did prefer the Harry, uh, the Harryhausen um, uh, take on it with stop motion animation. Mm -hmm. But seeing cinema and how far it's come since the old days of stop motion special effects into CGI renewed his passion for movies. And he decided that right now was the time to open a new movie theater. Mm -hmm. In Indeed. And it was a deeply profitable expenditure hopefully you did it in evanston so that uh everyone who lives in rogers park would not have to drive that far uh if they wanted to see something in a place other than the new 400. um but most importantly uh cardi tell us tell us about how this journey's been uh this journey has been amazing for cardi uh in the relationship in between me and Bessa, we have definitely settled down in our relationship in, and it is so wonderful to find someone who you really have a great connection with. In fact, can, can I say this here? Oh, go ahead, honey. You can tell him. Well, in June, Cardi and Tessa are expecting our very own boxcar children. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. wonderful. Yeah. We're so excited. Yeah. You know, it's oh, always yeah. been a real priority for me, and I finally just am with someone who's willing to express it. It's so great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and finally, finally, Rhett Michaels, still frozen in place. However, you stand for seasons upon season, years thereafter, as the true rock of love in the legendary love set. Uh, yep. There we go. Uh, and with that, that brings a conclusion to the epic love story that is uh, this, this of legendary love in this season. We watched Deusa Gordon find love with a cardboard man uh, or cardboard box, just a box, not a man, just a box. Uh, this has been a delight. Thank you for watching One Shots Among Us is up next where you'll watch people sass talk each other uh, and accuse one another of misdeeds. It'll be great. Um, but stay tuned uh, for uh, the finale of uh, our Six Things Tournament. I'm not mad. Not not mad at all. Not mad at Kelsey. Not mad at, at Denny Trejo. Not mad at Pad. Not mad at what was clearly a totally even, completely and totally even set of clues. Totally matched and even. To so be even. fair, I didn't get clues for that one. Yeah, I know. I know you didn't. <laughs> I've never it. seen Jurassic Park a day in my life. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yep. Nope. Everything was was totally even in every way. I, you know, uh, I just really wanna I wanna highlight that you know some of Danny Trejo's best best roles have been Hitman, and that's 
exactly what happened to Angelica Houston. So, uh, yeah, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, but in all seriousness, it's going to be a phenomenal final match. Uh, some of my favorite people and certainly some of the best performers when it comes to six things are going to be up. So watch it. It's going to be epic. Fantastic. Um, but also uh, very exciting. Uh, we are going to see uh, a whole new set of shows uh, rolling out in April and May. So stay tuned. There'll be lots of info on it. One Shots will have one one more shot next week. Uh, we'll be doing a, an all-female cast as a celebration of our uh, Women's Weekend and to close out uh, Women's History Month. It's going to be great. Uh, but uh, one more time, I'll let our, our, our suitors, uh, you know, uh, sign off. But this has been a delight. Folks, introduce yourselves one last time before we say goodbye. Uh Oswald Youngman, just happy to be here. Kenneth Allen, hats off to you. I'll see you on the bench. Um, my name's Kennedy, and whether you are gradually tinting your eyebrows with a dairy product or a cow searching for friendship, I hope it's moving along for you. I can't keep the secret anymore. It's me, Brett Michaels, lead singer of Poison. Thank you for your time and download my hit single, All My Clothes Have Been Worn. Thank you so much. <laughs> Cardi B, now the complete package. And I've been Susan Harmon, your Game Master. Good night. <laughs>